This episode is sponsored by NordVPN. This time on Distant Shores, we're dealing with aluminum boat building. We've had a lot of questions about corrosion and aluminum fittings, so we're going to talk about uh, how that's dealt with in the design and also in uh, the way the fittings are attached. And we'll go over the boat and look at a whole pile of different examples of that. Uh, starting right now. We're Cheryl and Paul Shard, hosts of the Distant Shores Sailing Adventure TV series. We've been cruising and living aboard for 33 years, documenting the sailing lifestyle. Join us for the building of our fifth boat, a custom aluminum Orion 49. Electrolysis, or galvanic corrosion, is the reaction caused by two dissimilar metals coming into contact with each other in a corrosive environment such as seawater. This occurs on all boats with different metals in the construction. With aluminum boats, two ways of dealing with the problem involve using a more reactive metal, such as zinc, as a sacrificial anode, and painting the metal below the waterline. So to protect the hull of the boat, there's a number of these zinc positions. There's four in the bottom of the boat, and a big zinc will fit in here and that will allow uh, the whole, this part of the hull to be protected and yet recessed in the hull, and there's four of these. This is the absolutely massive keel pin recess, so the keel pin is gonna go in here. The keel pin is an extremely strong stainless steel cylinder that allows the nearly three ton keel to swing smoothly up into the case. This is 120 millimeters across, so the pin is 110, and the pin is made out of stainless steel. So of course we can't have dissimilar metals touching. So the bushing will be Delrin here, like this. And this bushing slips in and is sealed in place, and that way the stainless of the shaft will never touch the aluminum of the bushing and the keel itself. Then there's going to be another Delrin washer there, uh, so that there will never be any place where the steel touches the aluminum. So there'll be an aluminum cover plate over here so that this is, will not be visible when the boat is in the water, but it will allow you to service the keel at any point in time you want. You can take this cover plate off and uh, drive the pin out and then remove the keel. Okay, so this is the prop shaft for the new boat. That's, it's very heavy, this is 35 mil solid stainless steel. So this is a metal that you don't want to touch the bronze. So this would be the same kind of problem you'd have on any other boat, fiberglass or wood or whatever. And in this case, we've also got to make sure that neither of them touches the aluminum of the hull. So there's the stern tube is a big thick aluminum piece exiting the back of the hull. And this will go inside that, hold its centers and holds this fiberglass pipe inside. So now all the metals are kept separate from each other. The stainless steel, the bronze of the bushing, the uh, rubber that you tighten with these screws, this will mean that this will suspend itself against the aluminum of the, of the shaft. So then you've got no metals touching any other metals. And that's what you want. So every boat has dissimilar metals around the propeller and the propeller shaft. Uh, wooden boats, and they've usually got like a bronze propeller and a stainless shaft, and fiberglass boats have the same. Now we've also got aluminum to deal with. So when you tighten these screws up, the rubber expands, suspending this piece away from the aluminum. All the staunch in bases look like this. Here's the staunch in bases. So this is another area where we want stainless steel staunchings and we don't want the stainless to touch the aluminum and we don't want any water to be pooling either. So instead of drilling a hole in the deck, we have it standing up to stop the drainage problem. And then we have a bushing of Delrin will go around the shaft and then the stainless will go around that and there'll be a washer of Delrin here. So once again, the stainless will not touch the aluminum anywhere. Here's a good example of the uh, design to combat corrosion. You've got, you don't want to ever have water pooling on the deck, and that's really the same again with other boats, wooden boats especially. 
So you want to design so that any water that comes down here, for instance, goes into the trough and drains down directly, always everything's got an angle to it to minimize the amount of pooling water, and the water drains and goes out the cockpit drains. And similarly, these lockers have got drains in back of them, and they are plumbed into the scuppers and go overboard. Fittings will be mounted on deck as well, of course, so there'll be winches up here. There will be also a stainless steel dorade for the dorade box. And again, those will all be mounted with Tef gel or there's any screws or Sikaflex in order to make a isolation layer or a Delrin bushing will be put on any of these units that are mounted on deck. What else do we have? So every fitting will have Delrin on it to isolate it if there's a dissimilar metal for blocks, turning points, winches, this kind of thing. And then Tef gel will be used wherever there's a screw to attach any fitting and you can't use a Delrin bushing. The windows are another feature that has to be looked after. These windows will be set in by the window manufacturer will come around and do them as they are the best experts in this. But again, you don't want to have any water pooling in uh, any cracks or anything. So the windows are going to be double glazed and will be set in here so they'll wind up pretty much flush. So the window manufacturer will come and use a sealant, something like a fancy kind of a window design, Sikaflex, uh, to go in here. But so probably, perhaps polyurethane. I'll get more details on that for when we get to that stage later on. One thing we won't be worried about later on is how to secure our traffic on the internet. For three years now, Paul and I have used NordVPN. Living on board and filming distant shores for all these years, We've appreciated the idea of having a VPN to be able to protect our connections and we're traveling in different areas. We have had NordVPN for over three years now. We've been using it to protect ourselves when we're online, but I thought I should just tell you a little story of how we first ended up getting and downloading NordVPN three years ago. So we were in the Bahamas and we had to upload a movie. I had already bought data so we would have the ability to do it and done a speed test and it showed we should be able to upload everything in something like 35 or 40 minutes a five gig file, and then we started to do the job and it said it was gonna take 24 hours. So we realized that what was happening was they were throttling our connection because they detected we were on YouTube and even though we owned the data, they wouldn't let us use it. But we downloaded NordVPN and got ourselves back to having a fast connection again and the download just took 35 minutes. And ever since then, we've been happily using NordVPN. Thank you very much, guys. Use our link nordvpn.com slash distant shores to get an exclusive NordVPN deal. To commemorate NordVPN's 11th birthday, for a limited time only, you will also receive an additional mystery gift on top. Fed is just, Fed is just gonna show me the last bits of aluminum work that need to be done down here. I gotta clamber in again. One of these days I might fall on doing this. Okay, so we're just watching the last bits of the... Oh, you've got the pipe in yeah. support on the top. It's all, uh, you just Gonna need to drill some holes, both sides, every segment, compartment. And then uh, they will fill it up. That's, That's where the lead... Tuesday or Wednesday, I believe. Yep. And we'll uh, fill, up, fill up the lead. And, and then you... Segment. Each segment will get filled with lead down here through these holes. So this we're seeing into the sealed, already sealed keel. Drill some holes over here, each compartment to fill it up. And then when it's filled, I'll uh, mount the top. Parts over here. You, you mount those? Uh, well, the, these are less pieces of aluminum. They go on top of on this. Top. Yeah. Oh, I see. To make a floor make solid. Floor, yeah. You've done an amazing job. She's totally beautiful. Awesome. Great to hear. Thank you. Yeah. And this is the compression post for the mast. We didn't see that yesterday. This is 
very solid, eh? It's very solid. So how many people were working on this boat when you were when doing the welding? Uh, at start we were with uh, four people, mm -hmm. five, f yeah, five or, or four, and I uh, was finishing it uh, alone. Yeah, the last couple of months. But at the beginning, when there was more, more uh, construction uh, and more work. holding stuff around, yeah, you couldn't do it stuff all by yourself. No, no, no. Yeah. it's uh, then it takes way too long. Well, uh, when you add uh, the hull plates, it's better to do it with two than alone because then you have to be inside and outside on the on the same time. It can won't work. That's why we do it with two, three, just how it's. Uh, and then you've got to work on all the finishing details. Yeah. So. Uh, particles. That's this a, is a organic. Uh, that's a charcoal filter. Charcoal filter, yeah. Charcoal and, and particles. Dust and particles. So when you're working and welding, then you're breathing through both that charcoal. So I get the clean air. And inside. your face is close to the work, yeah. but your air is coming from from behind. From behind you. Yeah. That looks very good. And then that runs off batteries, does yeah. it? Yeah. Lithium batteries, yeah, lithium. Yeah. Two of them. Oh. They almost last uh, eight hours, so. Oh, wow. Full day. So you only need a couple of them. Yeah, I have two. Yeah. Thank you very much again. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Just as we were finishing our inspection, a surveyor arrived to look at the construction. CE certification of new boats is compulsory for most yachts less than 24 meters. Uh, my name is uh, Hein Blomers. Um, I'm a, uh, both inspector and um, the executive of uh, ECB Netherlands, European Certification Bureau, stands for. And uh, this, this bureau has been appointed by our ministry to carry out um, inspections and certification on recreational craft. Um, and um, if there's an interesting project, I do it myself, and otherwise I let it be done by by my um, by my uh, other surveyors. Uh, and it's always good to to keep well, keep up with the developments, etc. So um, I'm very uh, interested in boats like this. Yeah. <laughs> and how many times will you be coming out to do this? Um, in general, we uh, inspect boats uh, in three stages of the construction. Uh, one, when the hull is ready, the structure is ready and can be inspected. The second is when systems are being uh, installed. Um, and the third is when the boat is basically ready to go. Uh, with all last bits and pieces uh, fitted out. Uh, and uh, all, um, all valves and safeties uh, present, and uh, then we have a last uh, check. Um, and you were saying you want it now because the aluminum is finished, but not hidden. Exactly, exactly. I, I can now still have a look at, uh, at the scantling, so how thick our plates, our frames, our uh, longitudinals or whatever is uh, present. Uh, and check that with, with the design, with the drawings, and with the calculations. And I can see the quality of the welding and, uh, and, and the general um, correctness of the, of the structure. Um, and, uh, and that's not possible anymore, uh, of course, when everything is insulated and covered in PU foam uh, or what have you. Uh, so that's why I have to look up. Yeah. Something like 30 directives, okay. uh, CE directives, and the recreational craft directive is one of them. Uh, the interesting thing about it is that it gives you general requirements for a, a yacht. Right. Like it needs to be strong enough, it should be stable enough, uh, the systems in it should be safely installed with safety systems, uh, fuses, and what have you not, the valves. And, uh, anything to keep the uh, to keep the boat safe, basically, and uh, uh, the crew, obviously. Um, and behind there, 
uh, behind those general wordings, like the boat should be strong enough, there are ISO standards describing in detail what they uh, what that should look like. Uh, you can calculate how thick the skin should be, uh, the frames, and etc., uh, or how stable. Love sailing and traveling, and want to try something a little different this summer? Then we invite you to join us in the Netherlands for a week of sailing aboard the beautiful Vrouw Francisca a traditional Dutch gaff-rigged sailboat. Step back in time with us and learn the methods of ages past. First, we'll travel through historic Dutch canals to reach the Eisel Lake, then lock through into the Wadden Sea to sail to the tranquil Frisian Islands. If conditions allow, we'll give you the experience of drying out this traditional flat-bottom boat at low tide so you can explore the tidal flats. There's always time to relax in the comfort of the boat's luxurious interior. Each night we'll berth at a marina and enjoy the amenities ashore. A bonus of this Sail Away Week is a stop in the town of Mackham to see the progress of construction on Distant Shores 4. No sailing experience necessary, but you're free to join in and help operate the boat as much as you'd like. We both like helping people discover the sailing life, hey. and this is a very fun way to do it. Check out the Distant Shores website for details and contact us to book this magical vacation. Thanks for watching, and throw a comment below if you'd like to see more of these technical videos. We value your feedback. Commenting, liking, and sharing helps us reach other viewers looking for this type of content.